And I used to think between sleeping and eating and having a social life, when do they actually want me to revive? If you want to grade nine or if you just want to pass your GCSEs, don't make this mistake, please. And a lot of you guys are going to be angry for me saying this, but you cannot revise in bed. Look, we've all had this daydream, the daydream where we wake up and find out that we failed all of our exams. So all of that hard work for nothing. It is so scary to think about and it's so scary to think that this could possibly be a reality. After a long day of school, it is so hard to sit down and revise. It is so hard to have the energy to actually do that, to study for your exams. But in reality, this is pretty much all of the time that you have to study. So how do we stop this dream from being a reality? How do we get ourselves to revise after a long, exhausting day of school? Find out in this video. So guys, this is a really highly requested video. A lot of people are struggling to revise after school because today is long and it's really hard to find motivation at the end of the day, especially when it's dark. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you all of my grade nine tips and tricks on how I made myself revise hours after school and ultimately how this helped me to get the grade nines in my GCSEs. As you guys know, these videos take a lot of work and I would really appreciate it if you like, comment and subscribe, as well as sharing this with anyone that you know that this video will help, whether it's a friend, a family member, a distant relative, anyone. It really helps me and it really supports my channel. So let's not waste anytime and let's jump straight into the video okay so my first tip is recharge now this seems counterintuitive like why would you want to go and relax and slump around instead of just going straight into work this is why after a long day of possibly commuting to school having an after school club having a seven hour school day there's no doubt that you'll be tired it's almost as if you don't even have time to rest let alone revise and it's just like when do they actually expect you to revise and I used to think between sleeping and eating and having a social life when do they actually want me to revise because it's almost as if there's no time and you have to add in extra curriculars they want to do things out of school honestly I was really really confused so the most effective way to prep yourself for revision after school is to have a break and just basically recharge recharging is basically ridding your brain of everything education everything academia and just relaxing just having it blank and doing something that you genuinely enjoy this means don't do something that's productive don't do something that seems like oh yes I should do this because then I'll be productive then I'll be motivated no just do something that you really enjoy whether it's watching a TV show, playing a video game, going for a walk, going to play sports with your friends. Just do something for a good 30 minutes to one hour. Just have a distinction between school and revision. You don't want to just jump from school into revision. It will just make you burn out and you'll find out that you'll be less focused and revise less hours than if you just took a short break. So know when it's enough and take a short break. Make sure you have some hydration, you eat food, you just nourish your body. Nourish your body in the same way an athlete would after a long training day. You're basically doing the same thing at school. Think of every day as a training day. The most important point with this recharging is make sure you don't go over your set time. So if you say you're gonna have a break for one hour, take that one hour. Once it passes, that's it. That is it. Like, don't tell yourself, oh, I just missed the time. It's 7.03, so let me wait until 7.05. That 7.05 will turn into 7.30, and then that 7.30 will turn into 8, and then you'll find out that it's 10, and you need to go sleep the next day. Don't make that mistake, please. If you want a grade nine, or if you just want to pass your GCSEs, don't make this mistake, please. It is such a slippery slope, and you'll regret it in the end when it comes to your exam so just have some discipline even if you go over by five minutes just say okay time to go time to start don't give yourself excuses make sure you hold yourself accountable you just need to start and this brings me to my next tip which is the five minute rule I'm not sure if you've heard of this rule but it's a pretty common one I heard of it from Ali Abdel he basically just introduced this rule that's been used for quite a while now and it's basically tell yourself you're only gonna do five minutes of work I know what you're thinking what the heck is five minutes like why would you do five minutes of work what would that do in the grand scheme of things and I'm gonna tell you it's gonna do a lot a lot of you guys are struggling with the initial resistance of wanting to revise so resistance is basically this kind of force that you feel in your brain when you're trying to get yourself to revise and this comes because your brain is lazy your brain doesn't want to do something that is hard for it revising is hard I'm not gonna lie to you guys for you to go from a state of relaxation to force yourself to do something that's hard is not an easy transition so it's better for you to just say I'm gonna do five minutes and that's it once the five minute passes that's it for me I can do whatever I want and I can leave the desk that is a good way to start off your revision especially if you're struggling with that initial motivation to overcome this conscious part of your brain that just doesn't want to do anything you have to be fast as soon as you say you're gonna revise you have to act on it immediately otherwise your brain is gonna talk you out of it your brain is gonna think oh we've had a long day oh I don't want to do this or oh, I'm already confident in this topic there's no need to revise 
I'll be fine. All I need to do is highlight something in the morning. Don't fall into this trap. This method will make all of the difference. Worst case scenario, you only revise for five minutes. And to be honest, that is better than nothing. If you actually think about it, that five minutes will add up and add up and add up until it will actually make much more of a difference than if you just did nothing every time you didn't want to revise. Best case scenario, you're engrossed in your work and you actually revise for maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour, maybe two hours. And that is such an achievement for someone who said they were just going to do five minutes. Tricking your brain into thinking you're only going to do five minutes will really help you. And eventually you'll build up your focus so much that you can just say, okay, I'm going to do 10 minutes. Okay, I'm going to do 20 minutes. I'm going to do one hour. This is a slow process. You can't expect yourself to just go from five minutes to one hour the next day. Just enjoy the process. Enjoy getting into the study mood and getting consistent and you'll see a lot of progress, I promise. The most important thing is that you need to stop feeling comfortable all the time. And I know this is so hard to hear, but comfort is stagnation. Discomfort is growth and progress. Now, this is a disclaimer. I'm not saying push yourself to do work when you really, really can't. I'm not saying that you should burn yourself out just to do something productive. I personally took a rest day during the week, at least once a week in year 11, and it really did me well. When you find that you're too sick, you're too tired, you just physically can't do it. Don't push yourself. Listen to your body. You know your body best, okay? Now, let's move on to my third tip, which is accountability. The reason why it's so hard to revise after school is because no one's holding you accountable. No one is forcing you to revise. It's totally your decision. Now, you might have your parents telling you off for not studying, but the reality is no one can actually force you to revise. No one can put a pen in your hand and make you write if you don't want to write. It all relies on you. That's what's really scary. And that's what causes a lot of people to self-destruct and to ruin their own progress because they're scared. They're scared that even if they put in all the effort, they won't get a good grade. And this is just your mind being an enemy of progress. You can't listen to it and you have to fight against it. If you are like me, you find it hard to revise for long periods of time, especially by yourself, because no one's watching you, no one's checking you, no one's judging you. You're basically in your room, you're comfortable. You can literally sit down and say you're gonna do a past paper and then end up doing Netflix and no one will tell you off for that. The ball is entirely in your court and your grade is almost entirely your choice. The way to resolve this is to go somewhere where you are held accountable. Examples include cafes, libraries, after school clubs. These basically work because they force you to be in that productive environment. And you also have accountability partners in the form of strangers or friends. These people are watching you like, there's no one that's gonna kick you out of the cafe for not doing your work. But at the same time, it's like such a waste of time for you to get ready, get out of your house, bring your laptop and sit in front of all of these people not doing work. It forces you to revise. I'm really hoping you wouldn't bust out a two hour movie or scroll on TikTok for four hours in the library. Or at least I hope you wouldn't. Another way to be held accountable is to have a study buddy. So have a friend, have anyone that you know that likes to study or needs to study and add them on a platform such as Flora or Forest. These apps basically work by forcing you off your phone for a good amount of time, allowing you to revise and be focused. And you can add your friends and see their progress. So maybe you can tell your friend, by the end of today, I want us to do one hour at least. And then you can look at them, see if they're doing the one hour and they will see if you're doing the one hour and it just holds you accountable and it's a nice way to bond with friends. Obviously, don't turn this into a toxic competition. Don't set yourself goals like who can revise the most. It's not effective and it's just gonna make you stressed. Just have this as a little fun way to hold yourself accountable and to also hold your friends accountable. Okay, so now let's move on to my fourth tip, which is distinction. So what this means is you need to distinguish between work and play. And this is very important in establishing a good after school routine. And a lot of you guys are gonna be angry for me saying this, but you cannot revise in bed. Let me say it again. You cannot revise in bed. You need to stop it. You will be in your own enemy of progress if you revise in bed. It is not good for you in the long run. Your bed is for relaxing, sleeping, recovery, and your desk is for studying, being productive, doing work. Do not mix the two. It's a slippery slope. And if you think, oh, whatever, she's just saying rubbish, like it doesn't really matter, your subconscious actually knows. You might notice that when you do work in your bed, you find it harder to sleep in your bed or you sleep whilst you're doing your work when you're at the desk. You're mixing it up in your brain and you're doing yourself dirty by doing this. If your room has a desk, then make that desk for productivity and go to your bed when you're ready to relax or have a break. If you have another room where you can go relax, go relax there and then come back to your work when you're ready. This just helps to strengthen that distinction in your brain and also helps you to revise for longer because you have a break from that environment. This is why going to the cafe or library is so effective because it allows you to go out with the intention of doing your work. You do your work at the cafe or the library and then you come back and you get to relax. You don't have any stress in your mind of, oh, I didn't do that. Oh, I didn't complete this. And it just helps you to beat procrastination. This is much better than being stuck in your room for weeks at the same desk, doing long periods of work and not taking any break because that is basically the formula for burnout. So try not to 
to do that. Finally, let's move on to the fifth and final tip, which is reward. Now listen to me carefully. It is important to reward yourself, but be very careful. Do not get attached to the extrinsic rewards, but rather the intrinsic. Now let me break this down. After a long week of studying, doing your best. It is great to treat yourself to something that you want. It's great to order yourself something on Amazon, get your favorite food, just treating yourself to something that you don't really get often. But this is a slippery slope. And I know you guys must be tired of me hearing that phrase, but almost everything is a slippery slope, as you guys know. Giving yourself a reward releases dopamine and helps you to start to associate studying with happiness. But if you do this too often, then you'll start craving a reward before you even start revising. So you'll need something as a reward to motivate you to start revising. And this is really, really bad because you need to get attracted to the idea of studying without a reward. You need to get attracted to studying because you want to please your parents or you want to get into a specific degree. Something that is intrinsic, your reason why. You don't want to get into the habit where your brain needs a treat to start revising. This is not good. Make sure you know what your intrinsic motivation is. Do you want to prove people wrong? Do you want to make your family proud? Do you want to get into a specific university or do you want to be the first one in your family to go to university? Think about this and use this as your motivation every single time you don't want to revise. Every single time you come home and you're feeling a bit lazy, you're like, oh, whatever. Think about it. Do you want to be the reason that you fail your exams? I'm sure you don't. So sometimes you just need to give yourself the extra push by thinking about your why and then you'll feel extra motivated to revise. Don't always be thinking about extrinsic gifts because sometimes you won't get it. Sometimes you won't be able to afford it. Sometimes it's just not possible. So get attached to something that you always have within you, which is your inner motivation. As with everything, be balanced. So guys, we've reached the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, you guys know what to do. You know to like the video, comment and subscribe for more content like this. And also share this video with a friend, a cousin, anyone that you know that will find it useful. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.